It's just after nightfall in Guyana, a country on the northern edge of South America. The streets are deserted. People here are afraid. A spiral of racial violence is strangling the country. This wall is a good indication of what's going on in Guyana at the moment. There are a lot of um, wanted posters, particularly for murders and people who are armed. Um, it's thought that a lot of these people who are on the run are actually responsible for some of the shootings that are going on here at the moment. This former British colony is racked by economic insecurity. And as the uncertainty increases, impoverished Guyanese are turning on each other. Killings that they call street justice. Guyana is one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. The average income is under $20 a week. This abject poverty is fueling killings where both Indians and Africans are dying. Ethnic tensions and gang violence have led to over 200 murders in the last year. With a population of just over 700,000, bloodshed has become commonplace. You don't have to wait long to get news of another killing. Someone had called us to say a body had been found in a sugarcane field. We headed for the city morgue. When we got there, the body was just arriving in the back of an old hearse. This is everyday business for the local news station. Another camera crew was already there. I don't really want to take a look, to be honest. I can see his feet, and that's all I want to see. Apparently, he's been shot in the head. Horror has become mundane in Guyana, part of everyday life in the former colony. The police have no idea so far who this man is. He appears to be about 25 years old. He's five foot six. The man is wearing a silver chain and has a tattoo on his left shoulder with the name Rolston. The nationalized sugar industry is Guyana's biggest employer. Money from exporting the crop mainly to Europe has helped to prop up an otherwise crumbling economy. But now that economic lifeline may be severed. The World Bank has told the industry to cut costs, and that means cutting jobs. Pull it. This is the sweetest thing ever. It's bad for your teeth. <laughs> There's nothing sweet about the future for these workers. A long-standing arrangement to sell sugar to the European Union at subsidised prices is also under threat. At the Wales plant, it's the last day of the harvest. How many people would suffer? You have about, let me say, about 1,700 people working on this test. Just this one? Just this one is. How many are there in Guyana? Oh, you have eight. Eight? Yes, an average about 20,000 workers. And you have an ex over 60,000 people. Depends on this 20,000. With a population of less than a million, the economic impact of losing over 5,000 jobs will be severe. But many believe that closures will also exacerbate the ethnic violence that already exists between Africans and Indians. But what will happen if the sugar industry closed, do you think? It'd be like a ghost town. A ghost town. You will have, more, you will have more crime more than what you can think about. Definitely you will have more crime. Remember, both ways work here. And if this should close, the strong survive. I strongly I take away what you have. That would be the ending of it. For the moment, Indians and Africans work side by side on the sugar plantations. But in the towns and villages, racial violence is already staining Guyana's landscape. I headed to the house of an Indian family whose father had been murdered a few days ago. Francis Singh's family are holding a Hindu ceremony this morning to pray that after his violent death, that he be allowed to rest in peace. For many families in Guyana, life still revolves around the customs and ceremonies of their forefathers. Francis Singh was a bus driver who was shot in the head as he drove through a village called Buxton. His family think he was killed simply because he was Indian. 
These four boys here are in white shirts are fancy singing songs. After the ceremony, one of the sons, Prem, showed me the bus that Francis Singh had been driving. What, your father was killed because he was he was in, an Indian driving this Indian, vehicle through Buxton. Yes. If he'd been African, he wouldn't have no, been touched. No, he wouldn't be there. Were there any passengers with your with your father when he was killed? Yeah, we had nine passengers in the bus. And were they were they Indian? No, one Indian alone. All the rest was Negro. So not none of the Africans were targeted in the bus. No, no, your no, father? no, no, just my father. And has there been any investigation by the police? Well, the police said they investigate, but we didn't hear nothing. The police aren't investigating anything? No, at all. they're not investigating nothing. They haven't arrested anyone, even no. though there were, there were, what, nine witnesses in the back of the car? Nobody, nobody now investigate nothing. Prem isn't hopeful that his father's killers will ever be caught. He has little faith in a police force where 80% of the officers are African. In Guyana, ethnic divisions are visible at all levels, political allegiances, employment, and where people have settled. This is a divided land. I headed to Annandale, an almost exclusively Indian township a few miles outside the capital, Georgetown. It's really when you start heading out of the capital into the rural areas that you start seeing real signs of segregation. There are whole villages here that are occupied either solely by um, Africans or Indians. Many Indians have set up their own businesses. They say at times of economic hardship, their wealth makes them prime targets for some Africans. This is start at six. Start at five, start at six. A few months ago, a shop owner, Basil Singh, was serving at this counter when a gang of blacks came in and shot him dead. His wife witnessed his murder. And he was a very nice guy. He's really jolly, you know, to every customer. He's a very nice man. I miss him so much. Basil Singh was shot seven times. His son, Muneshwa, was shot in the thigh. You tried to help your yeah, dad and I, you were shot as yeah, well? Yeah, I, I was shot as well. I eventually fall on the ground, couldn't move, and then they escape. They gain entry to the cross street, leading them into Boxton. They fled towards yeah, Boxton? Yeah, yeah. Buxton is a neighbouring African village, and according to these shopkeepers, it's where most of the trouble comes from. A few months before his murder, Basil Singh's shop, along with other local businesses, had come under siege. The constant feeling of racial insecurity has made some long for the old colonial days. When was British, things wasn't like this, and things were cheaper, but now things change a lot. So you actually want the British to come back? To come back, yeah. <laughs> We feel we can be more safe. In Guyana, segregation can be heard as well as seen. It's funny, when you're in Annandale, all you ever hear is Indian music playing. When you're in Buxton, all you hear is reggae music. In the last year, over 20 police officers have been killed in Guyana. Their patrols have become less visible, and people are now arming themselves. Do you have a gun? Do you yeah. have a weapon? Yeah, I have a personal weapon. You have a personal yeah, weapon? Yeah, my personal weapon. It's not the policing group weapon, my personal weapon. Do you want to go inside? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Basil Singh's killers are still free. His son is worried about future attacks. Is it an automatic? Yeah, it's an automatic. And it's loaded now? He told me that his friends had formed a group to patrol the streets. Are okay. the patrol out at the moment then? Yeah, they're over there. They're, over they're there. just patrolling yeah, up and down? Yeah, they're just patrolling up and down, yeah. But these men aren't lawless vigilantes. They've been given permission by the police to set up an armed patrol unit. They've been trained to use their weapons and have licenses for them. So this is your license that you yes. carry, and you carry it with you all carry the time? Carry the number for the weapon on it. On the front. This is license, gun, license number. I just want to keep my feet away from the, the bottom of your gun. Um, this is the number. The number is here. Mm -hmm. Right, so the serial number's yeah, on yeah. there. Did the police ever come and check your weapons? Yes. 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 When we do patrol, police come in, patrol to them, stop it, check it, mm -hmm. okay? Hold on. Okay. 
Yeah. You don't have to walk far in Annandale to come across stories of violence. Oh, right. Hello. Hello. Michael's house was raided by gunmen who oh. took his father hostage. When your father was kidnapped, did they ask for a ransom? They asked for money? Yeah, 20 yeah. million. Guyanese dollars? Yeah. And was any of it paid? No. They just killed him. Like he was fighting with them, you know? So they killed him anyway? Yeah. Five shots and he gave face. Why did they target your father? Why, why him specifically? Because Was there any reason? Money. They knew he had money? Yeah. But they still killed him anyway? Money takes too long to come. But you've got <laughs> guns now. No, don't start the boat. That's a joke. joke. It's a joke, it's nothing. <laughs> don't be a matter of fact. They got AK-47. They got AK-47, M70. And what uh, have you got? You've got three guns. Shotgun, shotgun. You've got shotgun. three shotguns? Yeah, shoot board. <laughs> they took me to Annandale's front line. The barrier symbolised the racial disintegration of the country. So why, why have you put barricades up here? So we have to barricade so we can't come back in. So why, Buck, Buxton's on the other side yeah, of that, yeah. is it? Yeah, 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 just over. But they could yeah. easily jump over. Well, they won't take the chance, look, I would, they would get this. Now, like, we, the first time we come and attack, we don't have a weapon. So this is the only way that you yes, could defend because, yourself yes, before, yes. just put barricades. Yes. But now that you've got guns, it's easier for you. It's just like being in Northern Ireland. Um, the only thing in Guyana is that the differences are, are racial, not religious. In an effort to combat poverty, the government has set up a number of new housing projects, but there have been problems here too. One of them got a visit from the Prime Minister. We're following the Prime Minister's convoy into a township called Collagen. Um, there have been a spate of attacks against Indians there. Prime Minister Sam Hines is an African in a predominantly Indian government. I'm pleased for this opportunity to tour with you, visit with you and hopefully by presence with you, give you the assurance that we are aware of this place and your needs here. Basically, we need lights. When we get a light, sir, everybody will be okay because we can able to see who's stooping, who's duping, who's crawling, and who's running. We need a telephone so we can communicate with the police very fast. You got all sorts of people in here, sir. We need lights. And another suggestion I have, is the entrance that these bandits use, we need to put up a wall. We got to get things the right way, not just saying it. I hear you, and I promise to work as hard as I could at it every hour of the day. We need lights. It's important. I'm not going to fool you. If I don't have the money, I can't get it done. This is indicative of the kind of criticism the government's coming under at the moment. Collagen is a predominantly Indian area, and there's, um, there's a big crime wave problem here. It's, it's very near Buxton, and the people here are obviously very worried. The Prime Minister went to look at the problem for himself. So where do the bandits come from? Somebody here comes straight away, get a dance. Somebody was saying we should uh, put a blockage somewhere. The government's solution to ethnic violence, to erect more barriers and to hand out more guns, seemed like a dangerous one. Prime Minister, can I just ask you, sir? Um, yes. And you're from where? Um, Britain, from Britain. London, yeah, yes. Channel 4. Um, do you think that setting up these policing units and arming people, is it not going to lead to vigilante groups here? I think community policing group has been a good event in Diana uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, it supplements uh, the police force. It also creates some identity and good relations between the law-abiding public and the police. So we see some positives uh, in it, and hopefully it helps to helps the community to take a position against crime and criminals. I decided it was time to go to Buxton to find out how they saw the problem. You see quite a lot of traffic going up and down this road, but it's really rare to see people move between Buxton and Annandale. Three years ago, when an Indian-backed government was voted into power, there were riots in these streets. Indians in neighboring villages were attacked, but the people of Buxton say they too are suffering.
victims of economic discrimination. Unemployment here runs at over 70 percent. You need jobs. A lot of crime won't happen. You hear? If they get jobs, they need jobs. And that is our greatest problem. Job, we need jobs. If they take on black, it's one black person they might take on, and the rest is Indian. So we are suffering. So, you, so the Indians are getting all the jobs? The, getting all the jobs. The contracts is the Indian getting the contracts. They might take down the few laymen. But if you walk around and look around, Guyana, you're going to see it. But the government's not doing anything to help? No, nothing to help. Because it's who dying? It's me race dying. Although the majority of police officers are African, some in Buxton see them as agents of an Indian government. This lack of trust is exacerbated by allegations that some officers are taking the law into their own hands. The current spate of violence seems to have started with the death of a man, Shaka Blair, shot by the police over a year ago. The police claim that they acted in self-defense after Shaka fired first. His cousin took me to the house where it happened. Can you just tell us what happened the night that he was shot? Yeah, this is where he was. Yeah, man. So this is where they shot him and dragged him down the step and shot him in front of his wife and children and just dragged him out and take him away. So he was shot by the police? He was shot by the police. And this is where the whole thing started in Boston. So Shaka's death sparked off sparked out, yeah. all the violence that's going on here? Oh, right. Poverty and disaffection have led to a growing drugs trade here. Gang warfare means that Africans are killing Africans. Shaka's immediate family have fled Guyana, fearing for their lives. After his death, I think people realized that it was the police, it was alleged that it is the police who have, did, who have done that. And um, so, Tony, so um, people feel, well, they have no other alternative but to take things into their own hand in terms of protecting themselves. If you just show us, maybe mm. just go to mm. somewhere where there have been a couple of shootings anywhere around here. Well, just at the spot here, a guy yeah. died recently. Yeah, just on the bridge here. Yeah. It was the Rasta guy who, he was watching video and as soon as he come out here, he was shot. This was burned down. This building here was burned down um, recently, last year. Was, um, early this year, this, this building was burned. Stop, stop. This small house here is a recent killing about three weeks ago. In this place here? Yeah, that small house there. Well, what happened now? People came in and killed about three guys. Um, we don't know who it is that did it. Did the police ever get involved? Um, the police came and removed the body. Um, they're saying investiga investigations are going on, and you know, so I, I really don't know. But no one ever gets arrested for these murders? Nobody ever never gets arrested. In such a lawless atmosphere, there are as many rumours as fact. This young man, Randy Joseph, says he's the victim of a gang called the Phantoms, said to be working in conjunction with some sections of the police. Whether the gang actually exists is unclear, but it's the name now given to everyone's worst fears. This is my son, Randy. Hi. Hi. Hiya. Randy says he was picked up by the police for no good reason and then handed over to the Phantoms, who tortured him and sliced his tongue in two. What did they do to you? They beat me, shot me up. Electrocuted you? Yeah. I got back up. And they tried to cut your tongue off? Yeah. Do you recognise the people who, who tortured you? Yeah, I recognize them. They were local people? Yeah. But you say that you, you were taken from the police station by yeah. police officers yeah. to this phantom house? Yeah. And that's where you were tortured? Yeah. The phantom death squad has entered Buxton's mythology. Any unexplained crime is now their work. Who do you think the, the phantom people are? They're um, people, they, they're, they're, um, I don't want to say, they're ordinary people just like me and you. But um, all these things, they're, 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 they're being paid to kill people. Paid by who? I don't know who was paying them, but somebody's paying them. And the government, they know about the phantom. They got to know about the phantom because they're not doing anything about it. Life's been going down every day and then there's nobody really like, interesting in, in human life. And who are they targeting? Who are they, who are they killing? Well, they're killing African people. Every day is African people dying. You may get a few Indian, but one or two. But the majority, if like, they get like five 
or 10 black people, you may get one or two Indian. The government has set up a commission to investigate killings by the police. Its report found an extremely high number of deaths, 62 in two years. The commission's recommendations, fewer armed officers and more training have yet to be implemented. So tell them, calm down. We don't know what, the, what are the facts. Well, you can't fight against 3,000 uh, 3, armed police. At the police headquarters, news was coming in of a shooting that had occurred that morning. A police officer had shot a passerby on a main road in the capital. The information is still coming in at the moment. Very well. It doesn't really seem to know what's going on. Yes. Have oh, you not lost control of your own police officers like this shooting this morning? There seem to be a lot of shootings by the police here. I wouldn't say that we lost control, but um, some police officers, you know, we are human. And um, from what I understand, it was an accidental discharge. And those things happen. Eh? Those things happen in any police force. Well, what about these allegations of these phantom groups, that the police might be involved? So who are the phantom groups? We don't know. We are going to get those people eventually, and we are going to put them behind bars. And the police right. aren't involved in these groups? If policemen are involved, they are also going to place behind bars, and they're going to be dealt with severely by law. It was five days since the young man's body had been brought to the morgue. I heard that he was going to be buried. The police had now identified him, Ralston Davila, a tattoo artist. Our departed brother has leave his mother, his brothers and sisters, and close family and relatives grieving. I listened to the eulogy. He had a lot of potential, but then that come and blow his life away. Ralston was just 20 years old when he was killed. Um, they had to dress him with a high collar in his coffin so as to hide the fact that there was an attempt to decapitate him. The police claimed that Ralston had been part of an armed gang. They'd arrested five other members. Like many relatives of Guyana's dead, Ralston's aunt still insists that her nephew was an innocent victim. He was very brutally murdered, though. Yes, so it's in the news we saw it. We didn't know anything. And we didn't even certain it was him. He weren't right. We weren't certain it was him. It's just not a case that he had a problem with nobody or them sort of things, though. And he worked and he wasn't involved in any no, kind no. of gangs or no. anything like that? I wonder how many other graves here are victims of shootings. There seems to be a common occurrence here. As the body count increases and the economy falters, confidence in the government is evaporating. For many Guyanese, there's only one permanent solution. It's estimated that every year, 10% of the population is emigrating. This is a real visible sign of people desperate to leave Guyana. Um, it's 6.30 in the morning and there's a long queue already outside the US Embassy. And most of the people queuing up for visas are Indian. With a forthcoming election comes the likelihood that disaffection will further fuel ethnic violence. Legally or illegally, people are voting with their feet. What is left for those who remain is an uncertain future.